Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Solar. So today we're gonna to be checking out Vatier's 100 amp hour wall mount battery. Now this is gonna be real similar to a server rack battery, except it's, it's built and configured differently so that it holds those battery cells, uh, can support them vertically so that you can hang this on a wall. It comes with its own mounting bracket. Uh, so it's really got everything included with it to be able to mount it and hook it up. Now, as opposed to a server rack battery, you normally have to have some type of a rack or server rack cabinet to be able to slide that server rack battery into. So there's usually an additional cost when you go with server rack style batteries. And they normally weigh somewhere between 100 to 105 pounds. Now this being a wall mount battery and I, probably the way it's designed to support itself, this one weighs in about 114 pounds. So it's around 10, 15 pounds heavier than a server rack battery but it's only about six inches thick, uh, so it shouldn't stick out very far from the wall when you mount it. So this wall mount battery does have communication on it. It can talk uh, with several different types of inverters back and forth, and it also has inner battery communication, and you can parallel up to 30 of these wall mount batteries together, and you could create a battery bank with 153.6 amp hours. So right now this battery is on sale. They're having like a prime day sale event that runs through July 25th right now. And this is running at right at uh, $960 on Fatier's website. And I think you can get it on Amazon for around right at $1,000. So this battery does have a screen and on the left side is the input. So that tells you like how much you're charging the battery. The, out the other side is the output. So you can see what you're discharging. Then you got your battery state of charge. There's only one other screen. You just swipe to the right. This is your inverter communication protocol. You can see there's nine different brands of inverters that it can communicate to. Right now it's set on die. Um, may go ahead and just change that to SRNE or you can change it to Victron. But I don't see Lux Power or Sun Gold Power on here, which is the two inverters I have on the wall right now. Now, if we look at the bottom of the battery, you will see the communication ports. You'll see the battery connections. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and then we'll probably go ahead and open it up and look in the inside and see what the build quality looks like. Take off the cover. Oh, nice long cable for the for the screen here, that's good. So physically, this battery is bigger than a server rack battery by quite a few inches. So I think we're gonna see some extra space inside of here. I'll tell you what, when we open these batteries up, it seems like the build quality on these is getting where they're all about the same, like all really good. So you got the, the bus bars between the batteries. You can tell that they're laser welded to the top of the cells. You've got all of your, these red wires here. These are all your voltage uh, readings for each cell. These black wires here, these are your temperature sensors. You've got a total of four of them. Now at the bottom of the battery, you can see the battery management system in here. And it's different than a server rack battery because it looks like it's laying flat. And I think the reason for that is once this is mounted on a wall, that battery management system will be kind of standing straight up and down. And then this heat sink will be up and down as well so that it dissipates heat properly. I'm assuming that's why they laid it in here like in this direction, but it sure seems like there's an awful lot of wasted space. And uh, yeah, one thing I noticed when I first opened it up are these bus bars right here. A lot of the budget batteries will do like two small wires. I've even seen, I, I think I've seen some people do four small wires, like crimped together and to try to bridge between the battery and the battery terminals. I think this bus bar is a, like the best way to do it. So I think that is a plus on this battery, having the bus bars. So all the wires on here, they're all nicely zip tied and ran through. They're all kind of bundled together with the battery management system. So wire management looks good, but the one thing I, I see that's not consistent, I guess, is like the one on the screen right here. This one is actually plugged in and glued in place. That way, if you take off the cover, it doesn't accidentally unplug. None of the other connectors in here on the communication ports or the battery management system have any type of glue on there. It'd be nice if they did try to glue those in so that they don't 
somehow pop out during shipping. Other than that, I, I really don't see anything else that they can do to the inside to try to improve it. I mean, this, this looks pretty good. So according to their website, the, the batteries that are in here, they're supposed to be grade A cells. They're supposed to be rated for 6,000 plus cycles with a uh, design lifespan of 10 plus years. Now I couldn't find it on their website what the warranty on this battery was, but the paperwork that came with it, the warranty card, it says this product comes with a 10 year warranty from the date of manufacturing. So this battery does have some built-in handles down here at the top. And it'll help you like probably lift it up, move it around to like the shop or the house. But as far as like mounting it on the wall, I don't feel like these handles are gonna help you out too much because you're probably gonna mount it somewhere head high. It'd been nice if there was handles, if these handles would have been moved down to the sides, I think that'd been better. So this battery does include, you know, mounting bolts, battery covers, also has about a one meter long cable, uh, battery cable, and it appears to be somewhere close to four gauge. It's actually not numbered on there, but it, that's what it looks like. And like I said earlier, it comes with its own mounting bracket. It looks a little different, it's kind of T-shaped. So you would mount this on the wall and then the battery just slides over the top of it. Now, one thing that was different about this battery is it included three different battery communication cables. Now, most of the time, they only include one cable. It's like the common cable that 90% of manufacturers use. But this one included a couple more because the, the pinout is different on a Victron inverters. That's what this one is for, specifically for Victron. And then the pinout's also different for an SRNE inverter, and that's what this one is for. So I think it's nice that they included the cables. If somebody had like a Victron system, most of the time they're gonna to have to end up making a custom ethernet cable um, to switch the pin out from one end to the other to get it to work. I don't think I've got any other batteries that came with three communication cables like this, so that's a little bit different. So earlier when we looked at the screen, you could see there wasn't a, a lot of in-depth information on there. So if you're wanting more info about the battery, you can download Vatier's app on your cell phone. It'll communicate through Bluetooth and it'll bring up all the information so you can see everything that's on the screen, but you can also go down and you can see all four of the temperature sensors inside and you can see all of the voltages of all 16 battery cells as well. So if you want more information, you just have to download the app. Now I'll go ahead, I'll get the mounting bracket put on the wall. Got it. Oh, there, I got it. Now what I was saying earlier about handles, there is actually a couple spots you can grip it on each side over here. So you could do a two man lift. Um, they're not exactly handles, but it's just inset where your handle fits in or your hand fits inside of it. But it's on the wall and I think we'll go ahead and we'll get it wired up to the inverter, start testing it out. So this Sun Gold Power Inverter requires, I think, 140 amps of battery power. And uh, that means we have to use two batteries. So we're gonna have the Vatier wall mount battery, and then we have Vatier's server rack style battery down here. And we're just gonna connect them in parallel. So we'll go ahead and power up our batteries. And inverter came on. So right now the inverter is in fault, error 58, which means uh, BMS communication error because it's not communicating with the battery. I've got the standard cable here. We're going to try it first. So I did get it to communicate on RS-485. That's what I already had it set up on earlier. That's what this was using. And I set this up as SMA, and this is set up as Sun Gold Power RS-485. It's communicating. It, it knows the voltage, knows the amperage, also knows the percentage of the battery, knows the state of charge. Um, yeah, so it does communicate, that's good. All right, so now I have changed the inverter to CAN bus and you can change the Sun Gold Power inverter to communicate differently. I've changed it to Pylon Tech and over here we're gonna change this 
to pylon tech and then switch it to the CAN bus port and we'll see if our air clears. And it did, it just cleared. 53.9 volts, 53.9 volts. Uh, it's drawing one amp is what it says. It's got 99%, 99%. So it's, it's communications working. Got to work with both RS485 and with CAN bus. So even though Sun Gold Power wasn't listed here as one of the communication protocols, we were able to, to change some settings uh, to be able to get them to match up and communicate. So I, I think that's good. I think the only thing left to test now is just go ahead and put some load on here and make sure this thing puts out some juice. So right now, the battery is outputting 12.6 amps. The battery says it's 12.9. They're pretty close to each other. So I think we can just look at the screen on how many amps is coming out and see if we can add a little bit more load to this. What I think I'll do is I'll just turn off the server rack battery. That way this has the entire load. That should double the amps by turning this off. It says it's outputting 25 amps now. 25 amps on the meter, so let's add some more load. We'll kick the three ton mini split. We'll turn it down. That way it ramps up. 59.9 amps, right at 60 amps. All right, now we got it up to 79.3 amps. Now she's going 123 amps, a little too much. Hundred and two point one. We're pushing it right now. A little bit over, but it's it's outputting a hundred over a hundred amps. So it's doing its job. Let's see how long it lasts. All right, it's been outputting over a hundred amps now for about fifteen seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. So I did run another test on this battery yesterday. I did a capacity test. I used my CBA five computerized battery analyzer and it just slowly drains the battery real slow like over about 30 hours it's a long test and it'll tell you what the true capacity of the battery cells are and after that test it came up to be 99.887 amp hours so not quite a hundred amp hours it was basically like 99.9 .9. it was real close but just not quite a hundred as they advertise but overall, besides, you know, just barely not making the mark on that test, I think the, um, I think the battery performed exactly the way a battery is supposed to. Now, as far as improvements that they can make to this battery, like I said, gluing uh, the connections on the, the battery management system, that would be nice. Uh, the other thing is, is the battery terminals on the, the, on the battery seem to be kind of small. And then, of course, I mentioned maybe some type of a side handle on the side to make it easier for, for lifting. But other than that, the only other thing that's missing is it doesn't have a built-in breaker. And that's something that I do, um, that I do prefer to have on batteries. I, it's just that it's a secondary um, means of protection. The BMS should, should trip out and should turn off the battery to protect itself, but I, I like having that, that actual breaker on there as well. But keep in mind, I would consider this to be a budget battery so typically they're gonna be missing a, a few of the options. They're not gonna be loaded with everything. So if you guys are interested in the Vadier 100 amp hour wall mount battery, I will leave links down in the description below. And remember it is on sale, I think to like July 25th. So I think that's gonna be it for this video guys. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.